Right, you've heard of Celebrity Y Swap. Well, today we've got Celebrity Angler Swap. You're going to see all your favourite specimen hunters in situations where you've never seen them before. And best of all, there's a nail biting finish which goes right to the wire. What more could you ask for? So what is the Catfish Challenge? Well, it's pretty much the gumball rally of fishing competitions, where well-known specimen anglers are paired with top match anglers. The competition consists of two matches. The first is a fairly typical affair which takes place on the match lake during the day. The second goes through the night with the anglers pegged across the two specimen lakes. But there's a catch. The specimen anglers have to fish the day match and the match boys are in charge of the night shift. However, if any of them fail to catch a catfish of any size, then it's nil poids. None of their haul from the day match will count. The event takes place at the Lakemore Fisheries in Haslington near Crewe. Three of the four lakes are being used for the competition, starting on Golden Lake, the match venue. But before the match can begin, the pairings have to be drawn, with the match boys drawing for the specimen hunters and then both drawing pegs for the two matches. So firstly, we need Mr. Jeff Ringer, please. There's your ticket, Mr. Jeff. Thank you very much. And if you could pick a, a specimen angler, please. Mark Satchwell. Mr. Mark Is Satchwell. All local expert. Oh, it's a flyer. 17. 17. Peg. Two. Two on the horseshoe. Top matchman Derek Willen draws legendary predator ace and fellow fox stablemate Mick Brown. It's me, Dad! <laughs> Specimen angler Kev Shaw is obviously delighted with his teammate Darren Mulhair. We need top end of long lake near the, near the food. Peg three on the long lake. All right, rub that end. And by a strange fluke, Simon Clark of the Catfish Conservation Group and Catfish Pro is drawn with Jeff Moores for the second year in a row. One pairing that avoided the draw as a reward for their success last year are defending champions Angler's Male Predator Man Mark Barrett and 2003 Fishermania champ Matt Hall. The final pairings are Jeff Ringer and Mark Satchwell, Kieran Rich and Jan Porter, Neil Machin and Steve Broad, Darren Mulhair and Kev Shaw, Pete Goodman and Dave Foster, Derek Willen and Mick Brown. Jeff Moores and Simon Clark, Steve Ringer and Terry Lowe, Jamie Masson and Gary Newman, Rob Perkins and Matt Rand, Dave Swain and Dave Smith, and of course defending champions Matt Hall and Mark Barrett. We went to this match last year, it was the very first time really that specimen anglers and match anglers had mixed and you realise that you've got far more in common than you have apart and we had such a good crack, the banter flows, you know, you're taking the mickey out of each other. <laughs> Only just over the 40 though, so... The first match will be taking place on Golden Lake where our specimen hunters are stepping out of their comfort zone in a bid to catch match size crucian carp, carp, tench, roach, rudd, perch, bream, basically whatever their hook baits bring them. And they will only have two and a half hours to do their stuff, with a little help from their match fishing friends. You know, a lot of us are sponsored, a lot of us have reputations, we write in the magazines, etc, etc. So you don't want to come second. The match boys must do their level best to contain any frustration, amusement, or maybe in some cases contempt, for in this part of the competition they can look, but not touch. A lot of the specimen anglers do not do this kind of fishing, fishing with a pole, a small feeder or a waggler. So hopefully yes, with a, two and a half hours isn't a lot of tuition to be honest, but hopefully with the calibre of match anglers they've got teaching them, they should learn quite a lot. Mick Brown, under the watchful eye of Derek Willen, is into some steady action on the pole. Derek, aka the Chinaman, three guesses why, is a Fox match consultant and is one of the country's most respected and funniest open match anglers with the biggest UK weight of 255 pounds of carp from Rolfs Lake in Oxfordshire. He still loves the Irish festival scene too, 
and with match bags like 65 kilograms of roach and 62 kilograms of bream to his name, who can blame him? But not everyone is as excited as Derek at this early stage of the game. We're not catching no fish from it. We're not getting very. We're not getting many indications off of the line either. If you know, it's not like this, we know this fish. I've seen them blowing just beyond it. But physically, bite-wise, I think we've had like one bite on it. What do you think the problem is? I think it's the pressure of. The, I don't think this lake sees this many people around it, and the fish, you know, are obviously aware that all these people are around it and walking about, and they've just literally shut up shop. There's fish in the peg. There's fish in every peg. They're just literally not feeding at the moment. They'll need to settle down and then they'll start to feed. That's a little bite then, see it there? Ooh, lift, 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 it's on. Good man. You just lift. He's only a scrub. I like how the pole doesn't bend, only the yeah. elastic comes out, you see what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's set up perfectly. There he comes. Perfect. Like a pro. Pro what? <laughs> like a pro. Pretty little fish. Just unhook him, slip him in and we'll go back out there and have another one, I reckon. A little miracle. So that's Pete Goodman and Dave Foster of Catmaster Tackle off and running. It's the pole again doing the business for the dynamite baits duo of Matt Rand and Rob Perkins, who seem to have sussed out a way to catch the odd small carp and bream. Ooh. First one on the near side line. Is that a skimmer, is it? No. Really? Just as you predicted. Excellent. That was just on a, a pellet, basically. Oh, excellent. Small skimmer broom. Fish number four, and I think that's probably about the same sort of size as some of the carp we've got in there. Excellent. Hopefully we're just going to get a few more in a bag, because everyone else seems to be getting a few now, so pressure's on. Simon Clark gets the jungle drums going with what looks like a good carp on the method. New experience for me, first time on the method. That puts Simon and his partner in crime, Jeff Moores, well up on the leaderboard. Meanwhile, it's all a bit more sedate for defending champions Mark Barrett and Matt Hall. I think Simon's just had a double-figure carp, which should uh, sew things up for him. Well, we're fishing very close to the edge of the edge of the reeds there, um, with the bait right on the top of the shelf where the fish are just patrolling through. And you can see them knocking the reeds from time to time. Um, it's a very, very good way of catching carp. The only problem is he's getting them out of the, out of the jungle, so to speak. And uh, this is the most difficult method that anybody's using here anyway. Here, yeah, fishy, 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 here. Here, <laughs> fishy, fishy. The partner I'm fishing with this year is Matt Hall. We've been given special dispensation to pair up again because everybody else draws their partners. Um, but because we were the title holders, we've given, been given the chance to defend it. Matt's a top guy. Last year we were up till three o'clock in the morning egging each other on. But three o'clock came and it was like taking the batteries out of the Duracell bunny. We both crashed and went to sleep and then within an hour we had a run. So. Hopefully we'll have the same sort of energy, enthusiasm and luck this year. The 
competition is well underway. One thing both types of angler, the matchman and big fish angler, have in common is the ability to handle pressure. Steve Broad's partner and 2008 Matchman of the Year Neil Machin seems to be taking their empty keep net in his stride. It's really good watching Steve not bagging up. But he will be in a minute, won't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you ever miss a bite then? Yeah. Oh, good, it's all coming together now. Plan's coming together. Now, we'd say we've only just really started getting bites, so if they start to come now, we could put a few pounds in the net, but it's been really difficult. We've lost two fish, one was foul looped. Um, the other one just come off for no reason at the net, didn't it? But, um, the other one did a Houdini act. Yeah. Steve finally bags his first fish, but has not been finding the going easy at all. Struggling. <laughs> really struggling. But that's the first fish, so we're, we're happy now. We've, uh, we've broken the jinx. So. Neil stayed uh, very calm with me and very patient <laughs> with me and hasn't attempted to drown me at any point in proceedings no, not yet. yet. Not yet, no. I'll get my own back tonight. That's what I mean, that's why I didn't do it. You're fine tonight when you're messing about with three ounce leads and yeah. 40 pound braid. You could do with an extra hour. Yeah, no, you don't need to do that. Maybe half a dozen of them will be alright. At least we haven't blanked. That's what matters. <laughs> where would I rather be now? In the lead is where I'd rather <laughs> be at the moment, rather than last. We're not last. Uh, we're not the last. I think uh, we'll come into our own tonight when... Uh, Definitely. When the expert takes over. I think we've got a good peg on the catfish like, and I think we'll definitely, definitely do well on there. And all I need to do now is put another three or four fish in the net, <laughs> uh, and then we'll be fine. Mark Satchwell isn't faring much better either, even with the, how shall we put it, vastly experienced matchman Jeff Ringer at his side. We're struggling, if I'm honest. Um, Mark's had two bites, lost a decent fish, and landed a smallish one, about what, eight, ten ounce mark? Oh, was that a bite? Oh, it isn't looking good, but there's plenty of time yet. I'm learning quite a bit off this guy, to be honest, even though I've done a bit. Let's just push the point of that float into this Vaseline. Vaseline? What's all that about then? Well, sometimes you'll find after you've been fishing an hour or two that your float maybe is taking on a little bit of water and it sits just lower than you really want it to. So rather than take a shot off, all you need to do is have a little tub of Vaseline and just push the tip of the float into the tub of Vaseline. It just gets a little coating on the tip and that'll make it sit just that little fraction higher in the water. Only fractionally, but, it, but enough to make a difference. Bob Nudd could see like, me now, eh? Like a true <laughs> pro. I don't need Bob Nudd now. Yeah, beautiful. I'm really enjoying this. Huh? <laughs> Way up, where's you know, it gone? It should have gone in oh the Oh no, it's gone through a hole in oh, the net. Oh no! <laughs> oh, turn your oh. net upside down. Right. Turn the net upside down, keep it up. Oh well. Go on, keep it up, bring it up. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> What's gone on there? Oh well, it could only happen to me. I hope Matt's not going to be watching this. I'm really making a tit of myself on the pole. I've had five so far. We're about an uh, hour and a half into the match, and I've had five missed two bites. But uh, I'm getting some good instruction here from Derek. <laughs> I haven't had to tell you anything, you're kidding me, you. He's kidding me. <laughs> He's telling me what to do. <laughs> They're trying to keep it quiet, but word is Northwest Bagging Machine Darren Mulhair and Kev Shaw of Catfish Pro are in with a shout, but are mulling over a change of plan. I like match fishing. I've fished matches now for over 20 years. Um, and this is one of my favourite methods, the method feeder that we're fishing today. Uh, we've had 
three fish on this so far. The first one was probably five or six pounds and then two smaller fish, so pretty good start really, but it's tailed off now. Earlier on, at the start of the match, the method feeder was the best method. We're just ready now to switch over to pole and pellet to try and catch some skimmers, uh, just to try and boost our weight. So if this doesn't go around in the next, say, five minutes, we're going to go straight on the pellet and, and try and try and catch some skimmers just to, to add to the weight we've got. I usually fish for uh, pike or uh, carp. Um, preferably, I enjoy boat fishing for the pike island. I've just come back from uh, three sessions of a, a week at a time across in Ireland, uh, where we had fished a 25 pound. And in the summer, I'll fish for anything cats, anything that's big. But uh, this, this last year, I had uh, carp to uh, 55 pounds. So I had a good, a good season of what's called Acton Bernal. Which is um, so that's that's probably my favourite fish at the moment is uh, is my carp fishing, but hopefully a big cat tonight of around forty pound and that'll be my favourite fish. As suspected, the method stops working for them, and it's time for Kev to try his hand with the pole. And under Darren's masterful guidance, it doesn't take him long to get into some action. It's a, it's a bream, and it's, by luck of it, it's been doing a lot of rooting in the in the bottom because I should show you big fingers like if you look at his top lip there, see how it's, it's all discoloured. You can see in the lip there in the mouth where he's been grubbing into the silt. Yeah. We've only just started on this, so moved on to the uh, pallets, and uh, probably we've only been like two minutes, haven't we? Yeah. So I'm a pole expert now. Let's get another one. First pole caught fish, of course, in about 20 years, that is. <laughs> They've been fishing at about 80 yards. They don't do that one long enough, do they? <laughs> to fish for me calf, 80 Not yards. Quite. I think we've got about 50 minutes left or so, so hopefully it, all it takes is one big fish, so. Hopefully that one big fish will come along quite soon. Dave Smith is all on his own. His partner Dave Swain has obviously decided he doesn't need any help at all. One of the biggest passions I've got at the moment is currently predator fishing. Uh, I'm doing it in slightly different ways I suppose. One of those being that we did a, a thing early part of the year where we attacked or attempted to attack a fairly double figure pike on the pole. And we were fortunate in so much as we had two fish out, one at 16 pound 10 and the other at 24 10. So hopefully today here at Leighton we'll sort of emulate that in the second session uh, when Dave Swain, who's my partner, is hopefully going to be with us and taking advantage of that. What we're trying to do here at the moment is I'm trying to get it up tight to that island just hoping for it to go round. Sometimes it is doing, but the bulk of the day it hasn't. Jan's called consistently next to me, so I'm trailing Jan quite desperately at the moment. But uh, that fits in with my plan because I'd set the stall out to sort of finish last and I think I'm going to accomplish that. Dio as Kieran Rich has been able to take it easy on peg five for most of the afternoon, as his partner, Jan Porter, just keeps reeling them in. Mind you, he is a former international match angler. Isn't that cheating, boys? It's just great to be here. Um, as, as regards match fishing, that's something I said I'd never do again. So uh, it's quite exceptional <laughs> for them to have uh, marked or teased me to come and do this. But the lure is the catfish, so this has not been any hardship having to sit behind a, a quiver tip and fish method feeder for two and a half hours in such distinguished company. And I really enjoyed it. So, you know, these kind of events, which are a bit quirky, I'm, I'm more than happy to come along to do. But uh, in terms of coming back onto the match scene, uh, I'll leave it to the professionals these days. It's going quite well, actually. Um, Jan's doing well. I think he's caught a few more fish than a lot of other people. So looking at it, he's doing really, really well. OK, 
Kieran's set everything up. You know, I'm, I'm his, he's my gilly, and he's set me up on a really light quiver tip rod. Um, very, very fine tip. Um, the ground bait's got to be dead right. I, I mean, it's a formative experience for me because uh, I've not been getting the ground bait right and making a few mistakes, cast on the island a couple of times, you know. But that's uh, when you're rusty, you tend to do that. But um, it's just method feed, a short, short link, they're cell hooking, trying to prevent myself from striking at line bites. That's the difficulty. And um, yeah, it's, it's accurate stuff. It's uh, uh, a lot of finesse involved in this kind of fishing. And um, I just know if Kieran was fishing here today, he'd have had twice as many fish, but uh, he's far too modest to say that. There's about 15 minutes left. Um, good start. I had one first cast, took me through the rushes, and fortunately, we we're on some decent gear, so it uh, didn't make a fool out of me. We had a, a, a fairly unique situation where I, I had a, a nice skimmer of about 10 or 12 ounces that uh, came off and I sort of dropped my head down and was quite embarrassed and then Kieran po carefully pointed out to me that it was still on the top of the, of the lake so I managed to scoop it out and, uh, and as a consequence of that we put a few fish together and I think I'm doing well, I'm probably certainly in the top three or four on the lake and, and that's quite good, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's a nice skimmer, just about on the last knockings, about 8 ounce, 10 ounce fish. But that's predominantly what I've got actually. Got a couple of carp, but um, skimmers seem to be feeding today, so just take what comes along, the more the merrier. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're probably going to be in the top five or six, we've got a few fish in the net, but not really going to be challenging the leaders. I think Simon over there has run away with that one. Um, we've had a bit of a case of so near, but so yet so far, because uh, Numnuts here has managed to lose two in the reeds, but uh, we've got about five minutes left, and there is a fish over there still. I'm getting line bites all the time, I just can't get it to take. As the competition enters the last minutes of this first match, everyone except for Mark seems to be bagging fish. Almost as though the fish have come on the free now. Yeah, yeah, we're getting more signs now. Yeah. Mate. Everybody's catching up. I think, uh, personally, it's the way you're uh, fishing, personally. No, I mean, all, everybody around me is getting the odd one, right? Yeah. 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 20 seconds. Oh! We missed out on the big one that was there. So that's it, first match over and time for the weigh-in, and some of the favourites haven't done as well as expected. Well I haven't done very good, I had uh, seven carp for uh, four and a quarter pounds, but to be fair I did have the worst swim on the lake, or well, so they tell me anyway. The rules of the competition are, if you catch a catfish in the next part of the competition you can add the weight of your silverfish to the catfish weight. But, I mean, four pounds not going to make a lot of difference either way, really. But uh, it was a good experience catching on the pole. I enjoyed that. Anyway, let's see the rest of the way and see what the others have got. Six, give you six, eight on that mark. Gutted. Not as high as we thought we were. Uh, right, there we go. We'll see. Who's on the leaderboard then, Mark? Um, I think Jan Porter, but he's a ringer because he used to be a matchman, so <laughs> that don't count. He's, well, he's winning. Pete Goodman and Dave Foster seem happy with their double figure bag. Uh, 12 pound 3. Oh. I'm a bit laughing. <laughs> oh, it's you. Yes, it's me. Come on then. <laughs> You've had a few, we have been disgraced. Oh, what's that gone in there? Hey, up. That's extra weight, I believe it. We have 4 pound. Oh, 8. Uh, I'd say that was about eight, uh, 13, sorry, 4.13. 
he's given me an extra round of bless him. That's a bad dude. Generous, that generous. These are all going to tackle down now, get the stuff into the cars, and then everybody's going to make their way to the car park, and then that's when we'll have the barbecue and eat at last. So the winning pair of match one is Jan Realtree Porter and partner Kieran Rich with 16 pounds and three ounces. We were really surprised when we weighed in because we th thought we got, well Kieran thought I got about nine pound and I was saying about six pound and he said the cart was six pound so I was also being useless at guessing weights. Um, and when we went to the scales it was 16 and I thought, uh, I thought you'd need a good 10 or 12 pound to, to figure in the top three but um, there was a lad round the corner opposite the island who'd had a nice fish and, uh, and apparently put some fish together. So we weren't quite certain uh, how we would fare. We'd beaten everybody as, as the scales came round, round into the corner and then disappeared off the radar and then as they walked around the other side of the lake, so we got the best weight. So I was, I was chuffed a bit, chuffed for Kieran, obviously, because he's my partner, and I, I've got to try and somehow reciprocate that. I'm as excited now for him as possibly he was for me earlier. and. Um, yeah, all credit to him. I mean, he, he, he just teed everything up nice for me earlier and I I'm, I'm just want to do the same for him now. But it's not over yet. This is going to be a long day for the boys. At 8pm it's all in for the 12 hour catfish match and all this afternoon's hard work will count for nothing if they fail to catch a single catfish. Conversely, one big cat tonight. 10 minutes can change it. Somebody on there can hit one of them 50s and it's game over. It's been a pleasure being in a legend's company. <laughs> it's been a pleasure being in the company of you and your teddy as well. <laughs> this is your bloody matchman. He's even got some pajamas, you know. <laughs> oh, isn't he lovely? Yeah. <laughs>